April Page and Bethy. April? And Bethy. That's the way I forget it. April, would you step forward? <laughs> Walk the board. What town are you from? What town are you from? Do you live in the town or out in the country? Grove, is that south of Canada? Hey, no, it's not Canada. Well, April, come on up here because you're going to have a really cool trip. Just stand right here, please. And uh, Becky? Becky, you step up here, please. Yeah, Becky's all set. So how old are you? 38, great. And if you don't know, that's great. Right. Well, I'm going to toss the orange to you. Haven't seen you play before, the little concern over here. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
it's not a word. Check it out. Pull it out. Yes. What? Can you unwrap it? It looks like something pulled out or something. Is it? What is it? Yeah. Tell me, oh, queen. Queen. Is your card a queen? A red queen? A queen of diamonds? A teamwork? Maybe a pop? Oh, so this is. Hey, did you drop one over here? Drop it over here. Over oh, well, there, she's got it over here. Drop, passed you by. You missed one over here. Did you want to be? Oh, don't give anybody on the team. The impossible doesn't become possible, teamer. Turn it around and take a look at that. Is that a perfect match? It is. Is that amazing? Show us your face to face. And God is so good, He lets people be in His team. Anybody that wants to be in God's team, He says, yes, you can. He wants to be in His team. Even people like me with bad feet and, and bad vision and troubles and challenges, He let everybody be in His team. He wants us to be in His team serving Him. And we're going to have a great time tonight. As the links come out here, you can meet about close and personal. I don't know, how many years have you been here? 14. 14. You don't even remember this movie, but you were standing out here waiting with your family probably, and someone came out, was talking to her, and some Minnesota fan, and you know, we know she loves the Lord, she's awesome, she, they, she had her Bible in her hand, and it's way more and more than this. They said, can I see that? And she was like, sure. And you hand your little Bible, and he opened it up, and it was right in all over it. It, was, it wasn't falling apart, but it was well worn, so way to use that on your journey. That was awesome. Thank you for sharing. Thank you, Katie, for this in April. Now, we have in the back area, we have some Minnesota links waiting for us. Let's bring them up. Hand up, stretch your leg. Let's go, ladies. Fantastic. 
Yes, it gets off, and I know a lot of times in the season people are serving you, and you have food back there, and all sorts of things, and I respect the fact that you were willing to go and serve others. Can you share one little teaser of a story that was very impactful on your relationship trip while you were um, well, there was, there was a lot of things that occurred when we were in Thailand. I was in Bangkok, and, uh, and then we went to a smaller city. I'm not really sure what the name of it is. But uh, we went mostly to talk about or to uh, relate to the people that were in sex trafficking. I mean, it's, it's one of those things that's happening all over the world, and um, it's kind of being pushed under the, the carpet a little, a little bit. But sex trafficking is a multi-billion dollar business that goes on, and without um, it being bought, you know, and there's kids eight years old that's being um, sold into trafficking. So our church is on the mission to try to you know, reach out to those things. But, um, but it was just being in the presence of kids who have no other choice. Um, like the, the story was this mom sold her kid because she owed some people $50. And the old, her own way of paying for for the people was to sell her daughter into the sex slave industry, and all she owed the people was fifty American dollars. And we take that stuff so much for granted. But um, there's people all over the world who's suffering, and, um, and it's us. It's up to us as Christians to go out there and reach out to them, reach out to the world, and uh, show the love of Christ. You know, and, you know, because we're so privileged here in America. You know, we just take so much for granted. But um, there's people suffering out there, and all we have to do is just speak up, you know, or offer help and hand, whatever we can. And that's what we do. Thank you for sharing very much. Thank you. Monica had an injury there in the end, and um, in the middle of the game, we want to know how you're doing. Fine. We're going to ask Monica a couple of questions, and uh, we just would like to know, what's one thing that this audience might not know about you? Coaches are different. Um, you don't speak 
once again, the level of commitment. <laughs> Especially as a wife of um, a white male traveler. I think for me, the, the most impressive thing has been the level of commitment to my, that my husband has for them. Um, and to my career, the fact that he's willing to stand not behind me, but next to me as I score and finish uh, what has been a lifelong endeavor for me as far as basketball. Um, as a mom, there are no surprises on the trip. You guys can laugh. I have all girls. Nothing surprises me, absolutely not. Well, if you have your game program from tonight, um, Taj is the featured player in the Lynx game notes. She doesn't even know that yet. And um, one of the things that is mentioned by her teammate, Simone Augustus, is how Simone, or how Taj, has helped her become more of a vocal leader with her teammates. And uh, Taj is thought of as a, an encourager and a leader on this team. And uh, I was wanting to have her share a specific experience where she's had a challenge in life that uh, where she has had to overcome and uh, how her faith has been a part of that. Okay, I promise I won't cry. <laughs> I'll cry. I'll try to keep this brief. I'm a long talker, as you probably know. You guys are getting a little restless. Um, <laughs> when I was 19, I had a daughter that I put up for adoption. I just become a new Christian. And I wasn't quite sure that I understood about being a mom and a Christian. I was off my workout, so I was at my church and they were praying for me and uh, the pastor told me, well, you know, we have plenty of women around the church that will help you. And I was like, you know, I pray for you. Really think God is leading me to do this because I wanted to have a better life than what I thought at that time that I could give her. And I wasn't stable in God. I, I'm a sad and I was still looking to the older women of the church to, to help me understand um, my faith and stepping out of faith with God. And so I put her for adoption. I had her in January 11, 1998. I left January 13, 1998. Signed her paper, saw her, and I said, Lord, okay, maybe I am going to um, I said, you know, Lord, this is what I feel like you're calling me to do. I don't know what I want to have the life that I want to have or have to do for her. I want to have something better. I cried my eyes out that day. They came in. I signed on her. I left. Started working at this day. We worked all day. He's going to bring you full circle. And you know, I kind of have believed because a lot of us here as Christians have believed when the man and woman of God says this to you. Like, yeah, that might not happen. You know, God might do that or might not be praying and believing in something. And so I was that way. I was like, okay, yeah, I'm never serious again. But it's okay because I believe that he's going to take care of it. And that's what he does for her. And sometimes we make sacrifices, not just as moms and dads and sisters and brothers, but just and sometimes we don't even know about God's hand in everything we do. At that time, I didn't know. When Candace was three, she didn't know. She just believed in that. And I thought about it. I used to get letters from her parents um, who were in Texas. I went to school in Texas. And I didn't know what they are. I found out that while I was playing in Orlando, they actually came to a game with her. And she sat on the baseline. And I went to say the ball. And she said that she saw me and she's like, I hope you see me. And I didn't pay attention to say, oh, you get out of here, come back. Never thought about it again until later on. And all those years, you know, I had my oldest daughter, Michelle. Um, I got married. I moved to San Antonio, graduated from the when I was 16. And my mom lives in Houston and she was having surgery on her neck. And I was in San Antonio, 
and I was at an game, <laughs> a game against San Antonio, and a lady walked up to me after the game. I was talking to some of my family that had come down and friends, and this little tiny Hispanic lady walked up to me, and I, I'm really, as you know, welcoming the people. So to me, they say, hello, how you doing? So she walked up to me by security, and she said, you know, I coach your daughter. Because I have my oldest is my five five. She's a soccer player. And my baby, <laughs> my baby at the time was ten. So it wasn't like she was playing. And I said, I think you're mistaken. How can you train my my daughter is so okay? And she said, I go to your And I said, No, oh, ma'am, I'm sorry. And I was like, You're a tricky baby. <laughs> because to me, in my mind. Father watches over you with an unwavering eye. 
every food is monitored, every tear is bottled. He identifies with your every pain. He feels every hurt. He steps in and says enough. When the hurt and pain no longer draw you closer to the Lord, when instead it is to downgrade your spiritual life, God moves in. He will not permit a trusted child of his to go under because of too much pain and agony of the soul. We may endure for a night, but joy comes within the morning. And that's the word that I receive to encourage myself and others. No matter what you want to do, what pain, what issue, weeping, crying, hurt, it only lasts for a night or a season. But joy is always going to come in the morning if you believe. He always takes care of his children. Thank you, Kevin.
I can get them up. Yeah. Uh, like I was saying, ever since that, that age of uh, middle school 12, I've just had this heart for the Lord and wanting to know Him, to learn about Him, to read about Him. I'm somebody who's constantly loving to learn something, whether it's on the court, whether it's off the court, a documentary, a book. I love to learn, having a conversation with somebody I've never met before. And uh, something that the Lord has kind of revealed to me as a passion, all the books the same, uh, this is the study of apologetics. Now, it's kind of a big word, but it's basically the concept of giving a reason for your faith. Um, and I think in first, uh, in first Peter 3, 15, um, I'm using the Bible app to so it's very handy. Um, the first Peter 3, 15, I think it's so great. I love the Amplified version. It says, But in your hearts, set Christ apart as holy, and now to his Lord. Always be ready to give a logical defense to anyone who asks you to account for the hope that is within you, but do it courteously and respectfully. And that's kind of a, a verse that I read just in my life, is that when I'm in a position of shame often to share with someone, you know, why do you, who is this Jesus? Why do you live that way? Why did you act that way? How come when somebody says something hateful about you, you show them love? What is some of that that's weird? And I'm like, Uh, I just challenge everybody to kind of pray about it or just you know, take some 
Thank you guys for coming. 